Hey guys, how are you doing? It's me Lily and today I'm here at my stealth shelter again and today's goal is that I want to build myself a couple of primitive arrows. Let me show you the bow that I built the last time. Okay, so this is the bow that I built last time and it's actually a primitive takedown bow and I've used some paracord uh, to make a vise so that the limbs stay together and this here is the knife that I will be using today it's my own design the Apo1S survival knife and right now this one is sold out in America so yeah we expect a new batch of knives in June and if you want to get notified of when the knife is back please make sure that you're writing me an email and I will put you on a notification list. Okay, now I want to go and search for some good hazelnut sticks, which are not too bent. And it's almost impossible to find a very straight stick in nature. So you will always have to bend them, make them straight somewhat. And let's see. So I usually go for hazelnut because it's a very light wood, but still flexible and it's fairly straight. Okay, here I found a couple of candidates. This one seems to be nice. It has the right thickness. So I'm going to cut off these three now and take it with me. Okay, this is it. These are the straightest arrows, shafts. Okay, so for all of the city persons that watch my channel, I want to show you a small trick how you can find dry kindling fast. So you just approach a bush or a tree and then you search for twigs or stems where the bark has come off, like here. Okay. And then you know when the bark is off like this that the piece is already dry. And this is what you want for a fire. See? That's bone dry. And this one also. So you can see that there's damage, which was probably done by a roe deer or something. And now we just rip this off. And this is some very dry kindling that you need for a fire. I have prepared everything for the fire. This is tinder, some grass. Then I have some small kindling here and here. And this is the fuel that I want to use. And now I want to open up my secret underground stealth fire place. <sighs> which is underneath the stone here. Yeah. And this is the entry. Okay, so today I want to make fire with the small matchbox, which my friend Waldhandwerk made for me. Thank you so much, Seb. <laughs> so, really cute. Matchbox, self-made. It's a little bit wet inside of here, so I want to lay a couple of sticks into the hole. Just to make sure that the tinder stays off the ground.
Now for the arrows it's actually better if they dry out a little bit because otherwise they are too soft. And I want them to be a little bit harder so that they don't bend through too easily. And with the fire I can achieve that. And green arrows are much easier to form and to bend into a straight arrow. If you have a, a dry piece it's really hard to get it in shape again so that's why I cut off the green arrows and then I dry them, bend them and then they should be fairly straight when they are hard. And actually you don't need a big fire for this so a small stealth fire, underground fire is enough. It will create enough of warmth so that you can work with your arrow. Okay, now I want to fire harden my arrows, which now are pretty much straight. Not perfect, of course, but it's as good as it gets. Okay, now for the fletching, I want to use some crow feathers, which I've collected from a dead crow. And also, one time, I have collected up a deer from the road. It was a roadkill. And then I cut off this sinew of the back strap. And I want to use this as a cordage material. These are some deer tracks. Okay, let's let's collect a couple of good stones. This one seems nice. This one. Okay, it's really hard to get the fibers apart, so now I want to soak the back strap in this water bottle. Just soak it like this. Okay. Oh yeah, it works much better now. Okay, now I want to make myself a knock at the end of the arrow and for that I first need to make a clean cut at the end. Okay, I need to show you this in detail. So here I have my split arrow and in between I've put a little bit of a small piece of wood and I want to bind together the arrow again and then at the end I have a knock which doesn't split anymore because I will use some cordage to go around it but still the knock stays open and therefore I can knock it into the string. 
Okay, the one thing is that I don't have any glue with me. So now I want to try something different. I want to mount the feathers just like this on the string. And I want to bind them onto the shaft and then they stick out a little bit and this way the arrow will turn. And yeah, if I had some glue, I would glue them onto the shaft, but I don't. So I have to use the binding technique. And I made this much of cordage and it's really strong because this sinew backstrap is super strong and it's the best cordage when it comes to primitive materials. Okay, so now I have my two arrows. They both come with a fire hardened tip and with a couple of feathers on the shaft. They should stabilize the flight a little bit and the knock point also looks very stable. Okay, let's try out the bow now. Not too bad, but pretty soon the bow is going to crack because I have a weak spot here, so I have to get a new limb. Nice. This one is stuck really good. <sighs> Alright my friends, so this is how you can make some quick primitive arrows with a wooden tip and a couple of feathers. And they actually work pretty good. But the bow has a weak spot now, which is right here and therefore I couldn't pull it all the way back otherwise it would have broken so I have to make myself another limp here and but at least the arrows were okay so I'm really happy with them <laughs> all right folks so this is it I really want to thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.